Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and I found a couple of apps that let you model virtual photo studios, including moving lights around, trying different types of lights, posing models. And uh, first, I think it's a great planning tool if you're actually planning a photo shoot in a studio. But even if you're not, it's a fantastic learning tool because one of the best ways to learn lighting is to build yourself a big, huge studio and buy $10,000 worth of lights and light modifiers and then hire models and get backdrops. But that's not something most people can do. And these allow you to do it in a virtual environment at your own desk. And you can learn the difference between a beauty dish and a soft box and a standard strobe head. And you can learn when you'd want to use a grid versus a reflector or a diffuser that type of thing. So let's dig into the two apps that I found. Both you can try for free. This first one is completely free. Um, go to sdp.io slash VLS, and I'll take you there now. It's the virtual lighting studio, and it is just a web page. But when you visit this, you'll see that it's, it's really cool. You don't have to install anything. You can just try it out on any app. Click along the left here to choose different models, and then you can modify the different, uh, choose from different lights at the bottom down here. So you can do things like change the position of the light to kind of go off to the side and see what side lighting would look like. You can change the intensity of the light. You could apply a gel here. You could add a different light. Let's shift this one off to the left and we'll put a purple gel on it. So you can try out different types of effects like that. It's really cool. Click the solo button down here to turn off all other lights. That's a great way to just isolate the effect of a single light. And, um, you know, what's important for this type of thing is, is just playing. You can see that it's, it works really well in showing you the catch light that's in the model's eyes here. You can, so you can see this straight on flash is creating a catch light. And then we can kind of see the catch lights off to the side too. If we raise it up, raise up the main light here. We can see now we're introducing some shadow under the nose and under the chin. So you can get an idea of what it's like when you raise or lower a light. You can see at some point now we've raised it up enough that we lost the catch light. These are the types of things that you learn by experimenting with lights. So you can kind of get through that fast part of the learning curve. I'll just point out this button up here turns on ambient light as if just light that's bouncing around the room in general, and you can control just how much ambient light there is in the room. This tool I feel like is more about experimenting and learning than actual planning. The next tool I'll show you is also free. Visit this URL, sdp.io slash SAL. You can download this tool for Windows or Mac. It's the Set Alight 3D Studio. There's a trial. <laughs> you you have to buy it if you want to use it beyond like 14 days, but the the basic version is pretty inexpensive. I think it's like 40 bucks. But you might not need to go past the trial. And I don't I don't have a relationship with either one of these companies. I just found their software and wanted to show it to you. So I don't have like an affiliate code or anything like that. Once you launch the satellite tool, the place I'd suggest starting is going through the video guide here. So I'm going to show you the basics of it, but they have tutorials too that will take you a little more in depth if you want to. Uh, but let's click open demo set here. You can also start with just a completely blank room and build everything yourself. But opening the demo set will uh, give you an idea and allow you to more easily browse through different portrait setups. So here we see their default configuration, which is a camera on a stand over here. And then it looks like five lights. We have the main light here coming off from the left. We have a uh, fill light on the right here. And then we have a couple of uh, one kicker light here that's pointed at the model, adding a little bit of rim lighting to her body here. And then two different lights pointed at the backdrop to create this light and this light that are just lighting the backdrop. Um, so in the center here, you see the main studio. You can pan around the studio by holding down the right mouse button and just dragging. So that pans. And you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to move in and out. So this kind of allows you to browse the studio. You can view, get the view through the camera by clicking this little button that switches, which is more dominant in the scene. So let's switch back and I'll show you just basically how to configure things. You can click subjects here, lights, models, backdrops, whatever and then modify their properties. So, uh,
you can change her pose here. You know what? Let's find ourselves a model with some clothes. <laughs> Let's switch to this one. Okay. So I click that and I'll click apply to stage and this will change the stage. So now in this particular, just a sample demo, sam sample demo that they have, they actually have two lights in the camera frame. Let's pan around a little bit so we can see everybody. And I'll zoom in. Um, I'll select the model and let's say you're getting ready for a shot where you know the model's going to be wearing yellow. You can click that and switch her outfit to a bright, nice yellow. Um, you can grab a light here and kind of change the direction of the light by gra grabbing it at the top. You can grab the stand to raise or lower the light. Let's say you want to switch to more of a on-axis lighting. Um, one really nice thing, this happens in the real world to me all the time, is now you can see the beauty dish is actually in the shot. I'm always struggling with trying to get the light on access, and then I discover I'm stuck in the shot. So that's the kind of real world things that you can discover. Let me just move it up until it's just out of the shot, and then I end up pointing this back down. Something that's useful is to look through the camera, and then you can browse through the set list here. So let's say you want to change this reflector here. You can see it's highlighted here. So we're looking at the one on camera right, or no, we're looking at the one on camera left. This is an overhead view. With that here, I can now change the power output put from this particular strobe. And it's actually simulating real strobes. You can see some configurations here. It's This is a 500 watt second strobe. So if you have real studio lights and you know you just have like the 250 watt second alien bees, you can switch to that just so you understand what the limitations of that particular strobe might be. So let's go ahead and crank that up. Now, let's say you want more light from the beauty dish. I'll click that and then I'll crank that light up some. Uh, let's take a snapshot of this. So I'll click this camera button here and it's gonna take a snapshot and you can save it, see it, that it saved it here. Let's replace this beauty dish with a softbox, and we can kind of understand what the difference between those configurations is gonna be. What I'm gonna do is, I'll just turn this off. I'll actually leave it in the studio. So I'll turn that off and drag it out of the way. Drag it out of the way. Nope, I clicked the wrong thing. And to add another light, I'll go down to the Lights tab at the bottom here. And I'll grab the Beauty Dish, and I'll drag it right to the same. No, I didn't want to do a Beauty Dish. I wanted to do a Softbox. So let's get a real big Softbox. And I'll position it just, just out of the frame there. Point it right at the model. You can see it's drawing that red light there just so you know where it's it's pointing. And now let's switch over to the camera view. And it takes a second to render. So you could see the light was kind of fluctuating there. It's doing some incredible amounts of math and it takes a second to render. You can adjust the quality of the render by going to settings and then quality options and drag these sliders up or down. Um, even on a fast computer, the high quality renders will bog it down. So the default settings tend to work fairly well for me. Now let's take another snapshot of this. And now that we have two snapshots here, you can see I can switch between the snapshot with the beauty dish and the snapshot with the softbox. Let's double click it to actually view it full size. So this is the original beauty dish and this is the softbox. And you can notice a couple of differences. The, the beauty dish had more light output because less light is wasted with the beauty dish. And the quality of the light fall off, like look at her face here, is quite different. 
the beauty dish is actually softer, but less light is coming out. Now, you'd compensate for that normally by raising the light. But that's the kind of thing that you learn working in a studio, and it might take you months or years working in a studio to figure that kind of thing out, but the software makes it really fast and easy to figure that out. Let's look at another example of how you might change uh, a light modifier. Let's find a scene that has a backdrop light here. Looking at Daniel here, I'm going to click apply to stage and open it up. And so he has a uh, pretty moody light on him. Let's click this backdrop light here. It's this light that's making this splash of light on the background. And as we click that, we can see on the left side here, once it's selected, you can change properties of that light over here. Light former, it has grid number three on it. So it has a fairly open grid. If I chose grid number one, that's a tighter grid, and you can see the spot of light became much smaller. The light output also became smaller. So if you were to use a tighter grid, it's just going to block light. So you have to kind of crank up the output. And now we've dramatically changed the background because the light was forming the background. You could take the grid off completely, and now what you see is a huge splash of light. Uh, so it's just really cool to be able to play with different aspects of lighting like that so, so quickly. Um, because even if you had all this gear, it would take you quite a while. I accidentally clicked away. Um, so let's go here and just turn this light off completely and we can focus on the what the model looks like. Um, I'm going to select the model in this little setup and you can see that there are some properties of the model you can change down here. You could change a skin tone. That can actually be a pretty big deal when you're setting up lights. Sometimes we'll have a day where we're shooting portraits and we'll have somebody with really fair skin and then somebody with darker skin and you have to go in and kind of change the lights. If you have a dark haired model like this on a dark backdrop, that hair is going to disappear unless you add yourself a hair light to it. So let's turn off this hair light and you can kind of see what I mean. You can see his hair completely disappears now because he has dark hair and he's against a dark backdrop. I'll select the model and go to styling, hair color, and give him lighter hair. And you can see that lighter hair is catching a lot more light. There are a couple of ways that this app will not accurately simulate what a, a real studio might look like. A real studio almost always has some ambient light in it. If you have some windows, there'll be some light bouncing around. Uh, it's pretty easy to completely hide that by using bright lights. But at the same time, a lot of photographers choose to work with that ambient light. You can't really simulate amb ambient light accurately in, in, in what your studio might look like. Also, um, kind of a, a big weakness of the app is that it doesn't seem to accurately model light shining through hair or fabric. And I'll show you that now. Um, it's backlighting with fabric or hair will create a rim light where it actually glows. Hair and fabric seems to be modeled more as a solid object here. So let's uh, let's just drag in a brand new light and I'll use it to create some backlighting. This accent too, which I probably would have called a snoot, I'll drag it uh, right behind him here. Let's zoom in some, and I'll point it right at his head. Okay, so now that that's pointed out, and we'll switch back. So you can see it's catching his hair here, um, but it's just illuminating it. It's not kind of giving it that glow. You just have to take my word for it. If we were shooting in the real world, you would see that it would actually fill the back of his head with some light, especially with that level of output. Even as I crank it all the way up, it's just kind of uh, reflecting off of it rather than shining through it. So it doesn't get all the textures right, but nonetheless, it's still a really, really powerful learning tool. And, and in just about every other way, the uh, modeling is incredibly, incredibly realistic. If you want to remove something from the set, select it, and then you can click Remove from Set here. 
Um, select models down here to add additional models. Probably the, the basic male and basic female are, are the easiest things to start with because they're both very flexible. So we'll just kind of drag the, the basic male onto the scene. And let's make a look at the camera here. Uh, click this and you should look at the camera or change his head position. Yeah, there he is looking at the camera. Okay. I can select this and choose from a variety of different poses so I can change the way he's standing. I can even hit play here and to kind of move around a little bit. It starts, it starts to even get a little creepy, right? This is like some Westworld stuff we have going on. <laughs> I'm afraid. What does he think of me? Uh, you can change different aspects of the outfit. Of course, you can change the color of his shirt. Let's make it white. Um, but you can also click this little arrow here and completely change his shirt. So if, for example, you're doing some boudoir photography and you want to be able to highlight the texture in the muscles, you can take his shirt off and uh, there's an option down here for muscle somewhere. Okay, let's... Give him some muscle so that we have something to define. And as we look through the camera, you can see this has fairly hard light. So it's showing some of that muscle definition. If we were to, for example, add a big softbox on axis, um, what that would do is essentially fill in a lot of that light. Oh, I put it right in front of him. And um, he would lose a lot of that kind of muscle definition. So let's drop that so it's acting more as a fill than a main light. Oh, I put it on the same side. I need to put it from the other side. Let's move it over to the other side. And you can just hover your cursor over the subject, the light or the model or whatever, to rotate it. So let's look at them close up here. And you can see with this setup, uh, if I turn off this particular light, suddenly here he's got a lot of definition. If I turn that light on, he's lost a lot of that definition. That's one of the things you learn through lots of experimentation or just a few minutes in the Set Alight 3D Studio app. It's an incredibly deep app and I could spend uh, four or five hours probably teaching you every in and out aspect of it. I don't wanna do that right now. Uh, I will show you a few other things. You can look up here in your, when you're in the camera view and you can change camera settings. So you could, for example, switch to an APS-C 1.5X crop camera and uh, put on a 70 to 200 lens. And then let's say zoom into 200 millimeters. Um, this is a weird user interface element, but if I click that and drag, I can now move the camera up and down so we can switch to more of a headshot perspective. And I'll click this to switch between landscape and portrait mode. So suddenly I have uh, kind of a a tight headshot. There we go, let's go just full Peter Hurley. Um, let's brighten that backdrop up a little bit and make it a white backdrop. So I'll select the backdrop here. I'll click this to change the color to white. And so I, I'm using a white backdrop. Why is the backdrop in the pre preview here gray? Because there's no light on it. A white backdrop without light is black or gray. So the way we solve that is by putting a light on it. Go down to the lights tab here. Just grab any old light with a reflector. Drop it there. Point it right behind our model's head.
and then we can kind of change the output. Um, okay, so now because I added that one light, we have a high key portrait. I can turn that off and we go and the backdrop turns gray. So you can, it's awesome, right? <laughs> one difference I'll say here is I'm lighting up the backdrop. Uh, this would definitely cause a loss in contrast of my photo because of the heavy, heavy backlighting. That element of the lens isn't really modeled. Probably the best way to start with the app is to go through their different uh, demo setups down here. Uh, for example, here's a demonstration of Rembrandt lighting. I'll double click that and then click apply and we'll switch over and then I'll click apply to stage. So this is traditional Rembrandt lighting and you can see the entire uh, setup is here. This is a really cool scene because it's uh, a common modern style, which is working the shadow into the scene. And by clicking apply to stage here, I can see just how simple this is. It's just somebody against the wall with a single light. Use my right mouse button to, to drag it around. Camera's way over here at an angle. Well, it's actually two lights because there's one backdrop light to put that splash of color. And it makes it really easy for me to see just what the difference would be if I turn that light on or off. Click that camera button and you can go into the photo viewer. So what it's doing now is it's taking a photo and rendering it in a higher quality. This takes a little bit because even on a computer with high power, it's doing an awful lot of work. This is going to be a more accurate representation than you saw in the preview. It's actually more closely modeling each of the different lights. Once that's done, you can click lighting diagram export here, and it's going to show you the light setup that you modeled in overhead and 3D views, and then a sample of the photo. You can see you can pick different templates here. And when you're ready, you can export it as either a JPEG or a PDF. So if you are going into the studio and you're going to make this real, you'll have a diagram that's ready for you. Check it out. Um, I think it's both of these are really, really useful tools. If you want to learn more about photographic techniques, including things like using studio lights, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography there. You can get it at stp.io slash store. My photography buying guide has information about choosing different light modifiers. Uh, that's also on Amazon or at stp.io slash store. And thanks to Chris Eziani, took a guess at how to pronounce your name, for sending in that tip. I really like that app and I wanted to share it with everybody. Hope you find it useful. Thanks. Like, share, subscribe. Bye.